Well, you may be seated this morning, but keep the switch of faith turned on. <laughs> and oh, Father, we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. He's the healer. I'm not the healer, but I know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're in his presence and he's in our presence this morning. Hallelujah. Now then, I want to tell you about little Willie Phelps. <laughs> little Willie, well, little Willie's leg didn't work. And uh, when, when, when Brother Roberts would, when that, anointing in his right hand would stop. He just, he stopped. He'd go into, there, there was one time he promised God he would never enter into a service without that. Because that's what he received from the Lord. The Lord sent it to him. And he just sat in his hotel room and wouldn't go to the meeting. And it came, he got up and left. Well, he walked out of the service that day, tired, and little Willie Phelps was waiting for him. And of course, his mother was there. He said, are you Oral Roberts? He said, yes, I am. He said, I'm supposed to be healed today. <laughs> he said, well, son, I, you know, about the anointing is gone and left me. I don't know about that. All I know is I'm supposed to be healed today. <laughs> so he said, well, all right. I'll do the praying if you'll do the believing. And of course, his mother agreed. Yes, sir, he said, I'm supposed to be healed today. He laid his hands on him and instantly his legs were made strong and he walked out of his presence. And I, I talked to Richard about that. He said it's absolutely the greatest miracle in all the years. Yeah. Willie Phelps grew up to be a, a man of God. Hallelujah. He laid his hands on him and his mother just turned him loose and he just, but he was supposed to be healed today. Well, you're supposed to be healed today. And you're supposed to be healed. You're supposed to live in divine health. Praise God. Now, we will walk with Jesus today and just see how easy it is to receive from him. Amen. Not one time in his life or ministry, nor by any of the apostles. Now, I know men have said this, but they didn't get it out of the Bible. It isn't in there. It isn't in there in the first covenant, and it isn't in there in the second and the last covenant. Well, you'll just have to keep this a while longer. You see, the Lord is trying to teach you something. One man said, I didn't hear this when Brother Hagin did. He said, there's just not too many people that I can trust with cancer. Well, now this is my opinion of it because I've, I, I can see where it would come from. Pastors and so forth, particularly in the pastoral ministry, they're hurting for their people. And they don't have any clue about why they're sick. So they just say God did it and go over there to the curse and find it. See there, he'll put that on you. Well, read the rest of it. We've been redeemed from the curse. And lack of knowledge of that factor right there has kept people bound for centuries. Right. Go over there. God will put this on you. I'm telling you. Now, I heard this one. 
I heard it, I was there. And I, and I know him. <laughs> he just got excited and got all carried away. He said, God will break your leg just to prove to you he can heal it. Well, you don't need any proof. This book is your proof. Amen. Say it again. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved only by what I believe. I'm moved only by what I believe. And I believe the word of the living God. I believe the word of the living God. Amen. Now, this came from Brother Hagin. God said it. I believe it. I believe it. And that settled it. He said it right here. Say it again. God said it. God said it. I believe it. I believe it. And that said it. And I'm supposed to be healed. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are different healings that we, we see in the life and ministry of Jesus. Praise God. Let's go to the book of Mark. When they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when evening was come, he saith unto them, let's pass over unto the other side. He explained all that, now watch. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in a ship, and there were also ships with him, other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so the night it was full. He was in the hinder part of sleep. He's trying to get some sleep, preached all day long. He was in the hinder part of sleep on a pillow. They woke him up and said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He arose and rebuked the wind and said, he rebuked the wind and he said. So what is that? He spoke to it in faith. He said, unto the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it you don't have any faith? In other words, they could have done that. He, he, he just got through explaining it. <laughs> and he said, let's go to the other side. Well, knowing Peter, instead of being afraid, he could have said, well, the master said, we're going to the other side and I'm talking to you, just, just be quiet. Because that's what he would have done. It would have worked. Because he said so. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? He's a faith man. <laughs> He's a faith man. So now, they came over unto the other side of the sea, or the, Gal or the it's the, the, the uh, Sea of Galilee. When he was come out of the ship, immediately they came, there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Now remember sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities, powers, listen to this one, rulers of the darkness of this world. One devil. Those are the ones that possess people. Ruler of the darkness of this world than wicked spirits in the heavens. Now what's the, what, what's the accuracy of this? <clears throat> A man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with fetters or shackles and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him always, night and day. He was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones, so he was a cutter. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him from a long ways off. 
Now, if any devil could stop Jesus, that would have been it. But he has no power over that. When he saw him, he ran towards him. And you know the devil's trying to say, don't do this, don't do this. But his own crying spirit ran to him. Why? Because Jesus had said something. Cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God, you torment me not. <laughs> For Jesus had said unto him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Amen. And he asked, what is your name? He answered and saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. A legion is from three to 6,000 devils. Now everybody there heard that. They heard that conversation. Now there was there nigh under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. So no one else heard that, but Jesus did. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the hogs, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 of them, and they drowned. That was food for the Roman army. Now somebody's in trouble. Whew. My, my, my. He gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out, entered into the swine. And the herd, well, the 2,000 of them drowned. They that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what was done. And when they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they, that were, afraid, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell him that was possessed of the devil and concerning the swine, and they began to pray him, get out of here. Depart out of their coast. And when he was come to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said to him, go home to your friends. One translation said, go home to your family. And tell them how great things the Lord hath done to thee and has had compassion on you. So here we are. Now, and I'm supposed to be healed today. I learned a long time ago that today is my receiving day. Today is my receiving day. Every day is my receiving day to receive from him. So now let's just keep, let's continue to follow him. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis or the, or the ten, 10 cities area. And you can do your own study. When, when he, was, he came in there, after this man's preaching the love of God and had his new suits. Because, <laughs> you know, he'd been a cutter. You know his skin and bones and he, looked, he was naked and looked nasty and ugly. But didn't anymore. And you, you, you check it out and just follow it. Great multitudes came because of this man's preaching. We get to heaven, we're going to find out what their people's names are. <laughs> anyway, so he departed over again by the ship unto another side. Much people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one, the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. 
And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, saw him greatly, saying. Now he spoke his faith right here. My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And that's the last thing he said. And he had a lot of opportunities to not, to say something else. Jesus went with him. Now the Lord led him over there to deliver that man because that man was called to preach. He did that on purpose. He came here, Jairus fell at his feet. So he just went with him. <laughs> Praise God. Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway or immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She believed it before she felt it because she said it. And yeah, in the book of Luke, she just kept saying it. And I noticed. And his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and sayest thou who touched me? He looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. That's how come we know it was for 12 years. So it doesn't say how long she talked. It just summed up her message and Jairus is standing there. Didn't say a thing. Jesus said, who touched my clothes, and he said unto her, daughter, oh, he liked the jar, I was like that. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole. In other words, you keep it. Yeah. Be whole of that plague. Yeah. Praise God. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, which said, your daughter's dead. Why trouble you the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said, he didn't give Jairus a chance. Jesus answered. So Jairus didn't have to. He interrupted. Be not afraid, only believe, only believe, all things are possible. Your little daughter will rise, only believe, only believe. And, and Luke, he said, stop the fear, only believe, and she will be made whole. Stop the fear, believe only and you'll be made whole. Amen. Now, many physicians we know from Mark 11 that faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. And he suffered no man to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he said, why, 
Why make this a dude and weak? The damsel, damsel is not dead, but sleeps. He's calling things that be not as though they were. Amen. They laughed him to scorn. Now, he put them all out. Well, you can see now why. In the first place, they were grieving and making two more. They were screaming and hollering and crying. Then he said, she's asleep. That made them mad at him. No telling what they were saying. They laughed at him. To, they laughed at him scornfully. But he got him out of there. Amen. Get all that unbelief and turn. Get the devil out of the house. Amen. Get the grieving spirit out of the house. And he took the damsel by the hand. He did what Jairus said. He took her by the hand, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto you, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. Hallelujah. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that she be given something to eat. What he did in one day. <laughs> and in that sixth chapter, he uh, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, of Judah and Simon. And he could there do no mighty work says, say that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them or people with minor ailments. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the villages teaching. Now teaching is the cure for unbelief. I believe I had a partially torn rotator cuff on my left shoulder. Brother Copeland, earlier in the service, he said, uh, somebody's shoulder's being healed. And I started working my shoulder and it was hurting just as bad as it had the whole time. And I was thinking, well, that's, I guess it's not me right now. And then at the, toward the end of the service, and he said, it's a shoulder again. And he started working. I started moving my shoulder and the pain was completely gone. I mean, no pain, it's still no pain at all like nothing ever happened. And then I noticed my elbow wasn't hurting and it's just completely healed too, no pain at all. We're going out to uh, going to share Jesus with people out on the streets. We also uh, minister healing to others. And then after you've been healed, you just have that overflow for the healing to flow into others. So that's, that's gonna be wonderful today. Right here. It's in the room someplace. That it's freed up and you can do it. <laughs> what, what just happens here? Hey, when uh, Brother Copeland said the shoulder earlier, I injured my shoulder a couple of months ago in Fort Worth, setting a tent up for Kenny Cable. And when he said it earlier, I tried it and it was hurting bad. And just now when he said that, it, the pain's completely gone. <laughs> it's completely healed. Are you ready to experience a life of divine health, vitality, and victory? Introducing the Harvest of Health Package, a collection designed to empower you and elevate your health. Turn on healing scriptures and let the Word of God guide you on a journey of faith and healing. Listen as Kenneth Copeland reads anointed healing scriptures. Defeat doubts and receive your healing, allowing the transformative power of God's Word to get into your heart and flow through you. Explore the profound revelations in Jesus Healed Them All, a book by Gloria Copeland. Discover the will of God in action through the ministry of Jesus. Dive into overwhelming scriptural evidence that without a doubt, it is God's plan to heal today, just as in the time when Jesus healed them all. And for those committed to living in divine health every day, the Harvest of Health mini book by Gloria Copeland is your guide. Don't wait for an emergency. Start feeding on healing scriptures now. Learn how to sow the Word of God into your heart and reap a harvest of health in your life every day. Because now is the time to embark on a journey to a healthier, more abundant life.
Order your free copy of the Harvest of Health package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Sow the Word of God into your heart daily and live in divine health. Feed your spirit on the Word and stay ready to reap your harvest of health every day. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Find something life-giving on kcm.org, your study center for victory. View the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcasts on demand and study along with the daily broadcast notes. Or download the audio podcasts to listen on the go. Watch prior KCM events for hours with truth going in your eyes and ears wherever you are. Get real help for real life problems. Follow our guide to believe, speak, pray, learn, and apply your way to results from your couch, desk, or kitchen table. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith every day. Read interactive BVOV magazines and click to unlock more content in each issue. Get a faith boost from testimonies of real life success from people just like you. Find information on what partnership means and take advantage of the resources provided just for you. Read archives of Kenneth Copeland's partner letter and download free books from our bonus library. Over 50 titles available to read on your phone, computer, or e-reader. KCM.org meets you where you are. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. The scripture clearly states, God's will is for you to be healed. He wants you well and has made provision through Jesus for your healing and divine health. The healing power of Jesus is available, but it takes faith to receive from God. And your faith cannot operate beyond your knowledge of the word of God. So I encourage you to keep feeding your spirit with the word. Take the time to put the word in your heart and make it final authority in your life. Be sure to get your gift from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. It's the Harvest of Health package, which includes two books and an audio CD or MP3 of healing scriptures. These free resources will help you build steadfast faith that comes from God's word to receive his best plan for your life. Get your free package today on KCM.org and start living in divine health. We'll see you again tomorrow. This is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you. We sure love you. And Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on KCM.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on KCM.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.